Hi there, I'm Dr. Trevor Cates. Welcome to the Spa Doctor Podcast. On today's podcast, we're talking about renegade beauty and how to transform the way you think about beauty and your self-care routine. My guest is Nadine Artemis, and she is the author of two books, including Renegade Beauty, Reveal and Revive Your Natural Radiance, and Holistic Dental Care, The Complete Guide to Healthy Teeth and Gums. She is the creator of Living Libations as an innovative aromacologist, developing immune-enhancing formulas and medicinal blends for health and wellness. Her healing creations, along with her concept of renegade beauty, encourage effortlessness and inspire people to rethink conventional notions of beauty and wellness. She re- she's received glowing reviews from her for her work, including The Hollywood Reporter, Los Angeles Times, New York Magazine, People, Elle, Natural Health, and The New York Times. In this interview, Nadine shares how to get back to nature and support the microbiomes of our body to help have optimal wellness and natural beauty. So please enjoy this interview. Nadine, it's great to have you on the Spot Doctor podcast. Welcome. Thank you. I'm so happy to be here. So today we're talking about natural radiance. I just love, I just love that. And you know, that idea that natural beauty is so much more than what we see physically, right? And and what we do as especially as women to to um for our beauty routine can actually not really enhance beauty in the way that we want, right? So I really want to dive into this this topic with you. Yes, oh for sure. I mean we've been taught to like primp and preen and poke and pluck and plast put on, you know, things with plastic in them. And so, yeah, we definitely need a new relationship with our bodies and a new relationship to understanding what's beauty, you know, for ourselves. Yeah. So first of all, let's back up for a minute. What got you interested in this? Well, I, uh, you know, as as a young child, I definitely, I had so much experience in nature. So there was that, there was this you know, the mixing and mashing of things and mud and all of that. And I would even raid my mother's bathroom cabinet and pour her like joy perfume in with probably, you know, things with skull and crossbones on them. (laughs) I just really loved that. But it was really a a sort of milestone when I was in grade nine, I was doing a science fair, uh, fair project and I didn't know what to do it on, but I was at the library and a book you know, kind of fell out of the shelf. And it was about making cosmetics, but it was geared towards a younger audience. It was really easy to understand. And, you know, already my, being the youngest in the family, my bathroom had all the bottle hand-me-downs from my mother and sister. And I just, there was something I really loved about that. And even at that age, I was like mixing the perfumes together. I'd gotten away from the skull and crossbones. And um, the chapter on perfumery was fascinating. And it really you know, this is before the internet, it really contextualized the history of perfume, where they came from, that it was actually distilled from plants. Because back then, it was just that bottle, it had no connection to well, and really what's in that bottle doesn't really have a connection to plants. Um, So I love that. And it talked about this thing called essential oils, and that that was the modern day word for what they were and you could probably find them at a health food store so we drove into the big city to the health food store and there I was smelling for the first time like you know the first whiffs of like orange and ylang and uh, for that project I recreated Lair de Ton using natural essential oils and that was really fun and then we had you know and then I really was into for some reason I had just the bottles I just and I gave my girlfriend's makeovers or I would crush the white Christian Dior eyeshadow into the crabtree and alvolin lip balm, you know, so it's just mixing all the time. And then, you know, the body shop was around and, and I thought, oh, that was natural. But then when I'm off at university, I'm 18 and I'm understanding really for the first time too, like more about food. And I actually skipped school one day and Lisa Benet was on, on a show talking about how food is hooked up to the environment and health and it was just really mind opening because this again, this was early on. We it's not like it was today. And then just through that, I understood, um, you know, and, and there was a health food store I walked by every day, and there was a farmer's market. So I just really started to understand about food and that the sh- supermarket was filled with fake food and, you know, kind of like five companies really supplied all the food and all that kind of stuff. 
So that was really exciting. And I really understood how to, what to eat and how to read labels. And I was making all my own food. And then I was just like, it just see it really felt like in the course of a couple months i was just like wait what am i putting on my body how am i reading those labels and then really coming to understand that this sort of petroleum promised land of products was just just dressed in like sort of you know the greener label but what was in it was still a lot of bs and so i purged that all and i just really i began making my own you know lip balms and and I put them in recycled like film cases and i was making um things like waitress legs for all my friends that were waitressing to help with the varicose veins and all of that. And I just found that whole realm so fascinating. So as I was going through university, and that was nice too, because at university I was really, you know, we had textbooks like Our Bodies Ourselves and understanding like really the crazy history of women's bodies in Western society, you know, uh, or around the globe and, and really cosmetics coming into that. And like reading books like The Beauty Myth and really just seeing like, you know, the history, especially our modern history of just this century of, you know, how all of our insecurities have been sort of exacerbated or, or you know, made up or, or whatever to just feed in these cosmetics that were really damaging to us. And so from that moment forward, making my own formulas. And then I was obsessed with ingredients because I was smelling and I was reading books. I love the 18th century period of cosmetic books because they were reaching back into the ancients to understand those recipes. And in the 18th century, we're on the cusp before synthetics were made. So I love that period in, in history for cosmetics. And um, yeah, so I would smell things like Immortal or Angelica, and I had to find them. So then I wrote letters like crazy, because <laughs> again, there was no internet. And um, try, you know, getting distillers and farmers and then getting in samples, and even things that seem commonplace, like a tea tree or a bergamot, were completely different and really blowing my mind or my nose and um, then I was understanding about the falseness with essential oils and the food and flavor industry and that so many of these ingredients were just sort of from warehouses in New Jersey and so just understanding all the layers and then um, I graduated and like six months later I'd opened up North America's first full concept aromatherapy store and had all my formulas out and uh, and that was the beginning of the present time. <laughs> yeah, that's fantastic. Yeah. Yeah. And so, I, I mean, I, there are a lot of different uh, parts that you touched on there. There's food, there's essential oils, there's even just how we perceive beauty. I mean, there's, yeah. there's so many different layers to this. I mean, I think let's, let's talk about, about how we perceive beauty. And I know there's these books that you're talking about, and I remember reading those too. And when the beauty myth came out, I remember being fascinated by that yeah. book and, and was, was so relieved to see that. And I think, I like, I think it was like in, what is it, middle school, high school or something. And I probably high school. And, um, but I remember like, being so relieved that that book came out because, you know, here I am at this, you know, as a teenager looking at magazines and comparing myself and, and like, you know, what is this concept of beauty? What is beautiful? Yeah. Exactly. Yeah. I, the same. Yeah. Looking at all the magazines, I actually wouldn't tell people like, we got to stop. We have to stop, you know, bringing those images into our brains. Yeah. Because of the, because of the, the, you know, the kind of the damage it does and the world of social media where everybody posts their perfect pictures. <laughs> Not, we don't, in, in the digital world, we had a bad, a bad picture. We just delete it. Right? We don't yes. Have bad pictures anymore. <laughs> we only uh, if only we saw the other 50 right. shots to get the one. <laughs> <laughs> right. I mean, it's, you know, it is definitely something that I think we all know to a certain extent at this point, but it's, it's nice, nice to have a reminder and that no, it's nice to know that there are other people out there that realize that there's something more to beauty than what you might see in a magazine. Right. Yes. And also I think when, when we're just in the world of surface, because of course it sounds so hallmark or whatever, cliche, like the beauty comes from within. It does, but you know, we're so bombarded with the surface, with the veneer, like to insane amounts that we really have to like step back and deconstruct that. And also, you know, 
and, and become free of it a bit because, you know, we're not going to get what we think we want by just focusing on the veneer of it all. And, um, you know, that's like a, that's a game that you're not going to win because you'll be 30 and a wrinkle will come, you know, and then <laughs> your life's going to be over. So we have to get a little more resilient and a little more understanding that, that it's coming from the inside out which again sounds like a cliche and that diet would affect it, but it does. And then also I think because beauty has so become this thing that's in a bottle, you know, like that's, I feel like it's just as like beauty, something that you can shop for and that you'll find the solutions in the bottle. Yet it's this sort of dangling carrot on a stick because it's like never fully realized. And it's like completely in the realm of like being ideal idealized. And so um, when we know it's not coming from a bottle of lifeless liquid of petroleum, you know, I mean, back in the ancient days or not an well, ancient ish, um, you know, everything that was applied to the body was like, you know, like tinctured from trees or pressed from petals and it was real and perfume was medicine. There's literally like words for that. Like thymectomy in ancient Greece is literally like letting perfume be your medicine. There was no division because it was seen as one and the same. And in and many cultures, the perfumists were also the priests, so to speak. They were the medicine people and the religious people. And there was a real understanding that we are a part of the cosmos. So I like to think in terms of cosmoetics, which is rejoining ourselves. I mean, we're already, we are already a part of creation, but just not having that false separation. And that, and just knowing that, you know, it's, it's from the cosmos that we would reveal and revive our inner radiance, for example. That's how we're going to get an inner glow, you know, and whether it's from the earth where we're eating and then getting the botanicals to put on our skin or engaging with the sun, the element of the sun or the element of pure water or fresh air. Like we're, you know, we're wrapped up in polyester clothing applying petroleum products, showering in chlorine and eating GMOs. And that's not how you're going to be radiant in your, when you're 80. <laughs> right. Or even 30. Even, yeah, exactly. <laughs> yeah. It's, it's catching up with us because we're exposed to these toxins, these endocrine disrupting chemicals and other toxic ingredients more now than we ever have been and our air, water, food, and personal care products. So it is, it is essential for us. And we're starting, to, we really are starting to see it in, in uh, our world's health, right? The amount of diseases that, and the shift and, and, and these chronic diseases becoming more prevalent, like thyroid disease or certain types of cancers and um, obesity, diabetes, you know, these that are, a lot of them are associated with these toxic exposures that we have. So, uh, you know, when we, we talk about, like you're talking about, I love what you're talking about, is really getting back to nature, right? To getting yeah. back to, to and you know natural beauty what what better way to say it? natural beauty comes from nature right so we we get back in touch with our what's natural with our bodies to um by looking at nature and i know you talk a lot um like in your books about about the microbiome too mm -hmm. and that is really helping us get back to nature and i think a lot of disease too has happened because of our the dysbiosis that we've put our bodies into throughout our bodies. Um, so I'd love to hear what you what you think about that as well. Yes, completely. And and the microbiome, you know, like many people have said, it's kind of like the soil of our bodies and like this, you know, especially with our guts. And as you know, we have the gut microbiome, the skin microbiome is a huge microbiome system the oral microbiome, and for women, the vaginal microbiome is really important to have healthy too. But within all that realm of just what we do for beauty with cosmetics, it can disrupt all of those microbiomes. And um, yeah, as we engage with nature, I like to think of that as like we can step back a bit and we can allow our bodies and our body's natural systems to activate and to take care of us. And we really even as you know as a mother as a woman as so many women are just you know doing it all we have to really find what nurtures us and and for me that answer seems to be nature because that's the thing taking care of all of us and so knowing our place in that and our relationship with that and understanding the the microbiome so that we can let the bacteria be our beauticians 
you know, allowing the body systems to come rather than us just like scrubbing and over exfoliating and thinking the beauty is going to come out that way. In the meantime, not only is that not engaging our true nature and selves, it's literally disrupting the micro microbiome. We're mutating species. We're creating things like melasma. I mean, there's this thing of beauty type, which is really just hype and was, you know, formulated by cosmetics manufacturers in the fifties and as a marketing tool. And the thing is all of those things like melasma, acne, blemishes, dandruff, hormonal acne, um, you know, all those things that we have going on with patchy skin, all of that, those aren't skin type issues. Those are all microbiome issues. And that's what we have to understand. So we can't just keep applying things that are disturbing that. Like one thing is soap. They now understand it creates like synthetic surfactants um, cause microscopic splinters in the skin. They just stay in the stratum corneum and they don't leave after rinsing. So we have this daily, yearly buildup of, for example, that, not to mention a methylparaben or something that we're, you know, applying every day. And so, um, and then you could be showering in chlorine. And then we're just getting this buildup that we can't escape from. And then things may show up on your face, but we don't think it's related, right? Because we'll, we've been washing our face like that for decades. And so we want to just, you know, understand some of that stuff, simplify and not be applying 200 chemicals a day to our body in the name of beauty. Yeah, absolutely. So then the next step that a lot of people go to then is, is conventional dermatology where they're applying topical steroids, they're using or antibiotics, yeah. the, um, birth control pills. And, and here you're, you know, you're, you're just adding fuel to the fire of, of not 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 only not addressing the root cause but worsening it when you're ta especially talking totally. about the microbiome yeah oh my god yeah so anything like you're mentioning the topical cortisones or antibiotics i mean any skin therapy should really keep the skin's microbiome in mind not be further disrupting it and so yeah a lot of people get in a really vicious cycle of like from their regular beauty routines going haywire going to the dermatologist maybe something's changing for a month and then they're hitting that same wall again and it's usually like worse and some of the side effects which i'm sure you're well like you know for the cortisones and stuff it's like you know pregnancy issues and uh, infertility issues it's pretty intense right yeah you know a lot of the skin issues that you talked about and you think about like i was in U uganda last year and wow but what when do you see that? Yeah, you see, you see these skin issues. I mean, all these women that we were visiting, that none of them had skin problems. And like, right. that wasn't the problem they were experiencing. Yeah, they had other issues, but um, but yeah, the uh, their skin was just beautiful, I and mean, they weren't they weren't having issues. So, and I'm sure they weren't applying sunscreen every day either. Right. Well, <laughs> and you know, it's it's so so we really have created this ourselves. And I even um, I was at a an, an integrative dermatology um, uh, symposium last year, and they were they were talking about how we've created a lot of this stuff ourselves, and that wow, and, and and that you know giving antibiotics the way that we've been giving antibiotics and treating our patients, we need to step back and think how can we do things differently. And so it's I think the conversations are are really starting to happen. They're not, you know, global and huge, but they're happening on a small level. And so we're starting to see, I like to see that there's hope and a, and a shift in the way that we're thinking. So um, that's amazing. That's let's, great. let's talk about some of the things that people can do to help support their microbiome that, um, yeah. that people learn that really help. I, I have this thing I wrote about in my book called Stop, Seal, and Seed. And you can kind of apply that to different areas, whether it's the oral microbiome or the skin and or even the vaginal. So stop is like stopping the microbiome disruptors. So stop applying petroleum jelly. I mean, whatever, petroleum-based um, products. Because there's petroleum in products and there's about 40 derivatives. You know, um, stop showering in chlorine. Get a shower filter. Like... You know, even if it's just like that $20 one, it will, it will improve. Um, so we want to do the things that are, stop doing the things that are disrupting. And then sealing is when we look at sealing and healing the skin. You know, and if it was a gut situation, you'd stop eating GMOs and gluten, for example. 
and then to seal, you'd start working with probiotics, prebiotics, fermented foods to seal the gut. And so for the skin, it's about, you know, rethinking all those dermatological peels, <laughs> rethinking, um, you know, using things with chemicals like oxybenzene in the sunscreen or harsh alcohols for acne. Um, just stop grooming your body with chemicals <laughs> and then sealing. So using things like, you know, natural oils to heal and seal the skin to re regenerate the hydrolipid barrier to like calm the stratum corneum. And then seed is about reseeding the area. So I like to think of our bodies as this sort of microbial bank account. And we want to have like diverse investments of different species. And so we can reseed, you know, our guts, we can reseed our oral environment, we can swish with prebiotics and probiotics. We can use things like honey on our skin, which are prebiotic. You can even add a probiotic to a honey, put that on your mask, let that sit for a while and then rinse it off. So there's those three things of like stopping the habits that are doing it, sealing and seeding. Yeah, I love that. And, you know, we've been talking a lot in the health world about leaky gut and now yeah. there's some attention talking about leaky skin. And so yeah. you're, what you're talking about is so important is how do we now, now that the damage is done, which really with, with, you know, just typical lifestyle practices that you're going to have damage done. So how do we reverse that? How do we, how do we restore that and heal that to help the body uh, behave the way it's supposed to when it's in a healthy state. And so healing the gut lining and healing the gut, getting that, getting it back in balance, um, healing leaky gut, healing leaky skin too, of, of that barrier function of our skin. How do we get that protection back to our skin? And, and like you said, it's stopped using all the toxic ingredients, the ones that, that are toxic for your body overall, but also for your microbiome and that that protection. And then, what do we? What can we do to? The, what are those restorative things that we can do to um, to put on topically as well as internally with the gut? I mean, I, I think it's so important. And then in your with them, you know, you mentioned. So I want to talk some because we talk a lot on the Spot Doctor podcast. Mm -hmm. We talk a lot about the gut and the skin and that connection. But you also know a lot about about the um, oral health and vaginal health and and the microbiome of that, which we don't really we haven't really talked about much. Yeah, so the all connected and you know the oral and the yoni, the vaginal microbiome, they have this very thin skin. It's the epithelium, and so it's one cell thick. So you know, leaky gums I think of as bleeding gums, and that's coming from you know. Our toothpaste with triclosan, which has been banned in hand soap, not toothpaste. <laughs> and studies show that in, in the antibacterial hand soap cleanser stuff, it actually, of course, cr makes your resistance to superbugs lower because it's devastating the microbiome when your microbiome's your immune system not the triclosan, but anyway. Um, yeah, so we're brushing with all this stuff. We're using like al uh, synthetic alcohol mouthwashes, which show to have over 36,000 cases of oral cancer a year. Um, you know, not to mention, you know, the foods that we eat that are disruptive or the dental pr protocols of like, you know, a root canal or mercury in the mouth. All of that stuff's going to mess with the mouth's microbiome, uh, not to mention like an antibiotic mouthwash. And what we're understanding now which is good about, we're really understanding antibacterial, I mean, um, antibiotic resistance. So it's helping us, it's, you know, it's helping the dermatologist go, oh, wait a minute. And it's helping us find other answers. Um, but we also know they're not always that effective. And so not all antibiotics can burst through the biofilms, for example. Um, but for rehealing the mouth, when we look at botanicals and using essential oils and different extracts that we've been using for thousands of years, like tea tree, you know, in different cultures, frankincense, tea tree, neem, myrrh, all of those things, we now have the modern science to understand why those plants have been used. And what they're understanding is that these plants have quorum sensing inhibitors so that they're actually able to suppress the quorum sensing of pathogens pathogens are normally like free floating around the body like plankton and then when they quorum sense that's their way of communicating and then getting in little gangs and then becoming stronger and stronger 
And then what these plants do are able to do is break up that quorum sensing, not have the gene expression and the communication. And um, they're able to bust through the biofilms. They're able to clean up the pathogens, but work with the friendly bacteria. So they're really some ideal substances for taking care of the mouth. And so then we can understand how they work for the skin as well. And so we just have to rethink about how we take care of our mouths, but simply just switching to something like baking soda, like that alone. First, you can add some to water and swish, get a quick alkalinizing of the mouth. And then you can put a little pinch on your um, toothbrush and you do it that way. I mean, I do make uh, a whole range of oral care products, but it's literally, you don't have to, have to do that. If you just went to baking soda and ditched everything from the drugstore, and did that for the rest of your life, maybe use a bit of sea salt sometimes, your mouth would be in just so much better condition. So that's also, we have to know it doesn't have to be that complicated. And it's certainly, again, not caring for a part of our body with chemicals. Yeah. And with the vaginal microbiome, you know, it's, it's a similar story. And what we're now understanding is that things like, not just a yeast infection, because that could kind of maybe be an obvious example of a microbiome um, off balance, but it can, uh, a microbiome off balance in that area can lead to things like infertility. That could literally be the reason why somebody is experiencing infertility. You know, it may not be hormonal and that complicated, um, or it can create a, pre, a preterm birth or a gum recession and, and, and um, a microbiome off balance in the mouth can even lead to a, a premature birth. There's that understanding as well. And so we want to care for our yonis in a new way too. And not the, the ads for yoni care throughout the ages are insane. You know, it started out with using Lysol as a douche. Oh, yeah. Go Google those early ads. They're horrifying on oh. so many levels. And then, well, that caused some deaths and irritation. So then Lysol was like, hey, we're a little less toxic. So Lysol had its time as a douche as well. But then there's all, all this, you know, from the, from the 60s where it was like woman's lib to have a clean vagina <laughs> by douching, you know. Anyway, so to present time. So all of those things are complete microbiome disruptors in that area. And even things like a KY jelly where you would think it's does it kind of seems simple and a little less like a little natural in a way it's just clear gel and it's glycerin but what studies show is that um it creates osmolarity within the cell so that just simply means the cell will then it it feels the water on the outside of the gel and then it releases its water so the cells under a microscope in the, in, the, in the vagina that's had a lot of KY jelly usage, um, they shrivel. They're like, they call them like cellular raisins. And then that creates a whole die off and then makes somebody even more susceptible to STDs, for example. So the whole program down there and then adding in a GMO chlorine bleach tampon, you know, that's a toxic mix. And so again, we want to stop. <laughs> you know, yeah. yeah, find an organic tampon or whatever. And, you know, I, I actually even advise, like, if you can just go organic, use the underwear or a pad and not put anything up there, mm -hmm. you know, that's yeah. been made by manufactured. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Well, and there, there are also some natural personal lubricants and different, yes. different things that people can use too. So they don't have to use the, the KY. And, yeah. Um, yeah. Like coconut oil and even just coconut oil. Right. Yeah. 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 Well, it's, you know, it's so fascinating. We go on and on on these topics that you, you have a couple of books on these topics. Tell, tell everybody about your books and, and where they can find them. Yeah, thanks. Well, I wrote uh, Holistic Dental Care, which is uh, all on dental care. And it's, 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 a, it's a good, friendly read, and it will really give you the kind of the 101 on how to take care of your mouth. And then I, I recently wrote Renegade Beauty, which is... Um, got everything in there so you could even start with that because my dental chapter in there is pretty pretty decent and you could just buy the one book but yeah we walk through that and like how to engage with the you know with the cosmos with the elements and then it goes on a journey from you know uh, breast health vaginal care the skin's microbiome a chapter on pregnancy um chapter on perfumery 
modern alchemy recipes and then sort of like an eight like renegade beauty solutions which take you through a really quick thing from you know from acne to um skin brushing like lymph like all the little things at the end to tie it off i just and that book i really was like wanting to download my whole brain everything i knew so far (laughs) so that i could share that yeah well thank you for for doing that work and (laughs) i i do think this is the time for women to reclaim our bodies, our health. And we have a lot of tools and information. We have a lot more available to us than we used to have. And, and um, so I, I think it's an exciting time with um, a lot of opportunity. And I think we just need to keep demanding more and more of it. And, and we'll, see, we'll see it all unfold. I think it's gonna be a beautiful thing to see. For sure. And it is, it's 2019. So it's like, you know, you don't have to give up all the glamour. Like there's so, there's a botanical banquet that's just like waiting for everyone to nurture their bodies, you know? Right. So like, we're not saying give up self-care, right? No. Don't don't give up your beauty routine. Just change your beauty routine. Because when I think a beauty routine is a beautiful part of um, of self-care and it can be a very self-honoring and healthy practice to incorporate. If and we, when we do it with the things that can nourish ourselves and our microbiome, mm-hmm. you know, then it's so worth it. And essential oils are such a great part of that, right? Yeah, they really can be. You want to definitely have real, genuine, authentic ones. But yeah, I mean, they, there's so many. There's just such a palette of, um, like, they're, they're all, they're, they've got all these medicinal aspects, but then they're also just, they, through their smell, they just really talk to all of the senses and work on an emotional, spiritual level as well. All right. Well, that's fantastic. Nadine, thank you so much for coming on the podcast today. Really appreciate your information and sharing your story with us. Thank you so much. I hope you enjoyed this interview today with Nadine Artemis. And if you want to learn more about her, you can go to thespadoctor.com. Go to the podcast page with her interview and you'll find all the information and links there. And while you're there, I invite you to join the Spa Doctor community so you don't miss any of our upcoming shows and information. Also, if you haven't gotten your customized skin report, you can go to theskinquiz.com. Find out your skin personality type and what information your skin's trying to tell you about your health, what you can do about it at theskinquiz.com. Also, I invite you to join me on social media, on Facebook, Twitter, Instagram, YouTube, Pinterest, at The Spot Doctor. And join the conversation there, and I'll see you next time on The Spot Doctor Podcast.